My name is Catherine Tai. My title is United States Trade Representative. Okay, so let's just kind of jump right into CHIPS Act and how that impacts not just everything that we have going on here domestically, but how does that impact our relationship with China, with Taiwan, because those are the other two major players in the semiconductor industry? So um, semiconductors these days, uh, everybody's talking about it because there's nothing like uh, a disruption in the supply chain to get people really focused on uh, how important some things are in our lives. And it turns out almost everything in our lives these days has a chip in it. And that's why the passage of the Chips and Science Act is uh, so incredibly important. Uh, this is America. Uh, investing in ourselves, uh, not just for today, but taking the long view and knowing that we are investing in ourselves and our futures. Um, it's going to enhance our technological leadership. It's going to create good paying jobs. And it's going to make sure that we stay a leader and that we're competitive um, throughout the world. You're right. Um, Global economic competition uh, just keeps getting uh, fiercer and fiercer. And what we've seen is while in the United States, we've always been at the forefront of the science and the technology and the engineering, uh, we have lost manufacturing cap capacity uh, over the last years. So the CHIPS Act is a really, really important uh, investment in our competitiveness and uh, making sure that um, we rebuild um, that manufacturing capacity here at home. Um, it's to make sure that we've got good jobs. It's to make sure that uh, we have leadership, but uh, probably most importantly, it's to make sure that um, we are resilient and uh, we don't experience these disruptions in the same way in the future and that we've learned our lesson from what's been a really tough couple of years. So for the past 20, 30 years, Taiwan and China have heavily you know, invested in this industry. And, you know, that's kind of how they got to this point. And we fell behind a little bit in terms of, in terms of production. How does this actually impact our trade with Taiwan specifically, who makes 90% of the world's, you know, most advanced semiconductors? Well, Korea is also an important player here. Uh, the Dutch are also important players. So, you know, there are some key uh, important players. What we want to make sure is that uh, we're not just leading in terms of um, uh, the design of our semiconductors, but we are we are heavily invested in the game of producing. Because as we've seen through the past couple of years, um, you know, you've got to have a critical level of manufacturing activity going on to make sure that when crises come up, you can pivot, you can scale up, and uh, also in terms of your trade flows that we've just got more options than we do right now. So in terms of the relationship with uh, our other countries, um, you know, uh, there are partnerships that we need to form. Um, and, you know, uh, we're also competing. Um, so all of this is focused on strengthening America's position as an economic competitor and making sure that we stay on the cutting edge of technological leadership. Now, we're talking about this because Central Texas, Texas as a whole, but really Central Texas is a major United States hub for semiconductor manufacturing, as well as the innovation development part of it too. Um, so how does all of this kind of affect Central Texans? Why should people in Austin care or people you know, in the suburbs of Austin care about this? Um, the people of Austin should especially care about this and celebrate this because this is going to be like a, a supercharged shot of um, uh, momentum uh, for all the leadership and all the capacities that um, are already in Central Texas. Um, we are expecting to see only more growth, more investment, more jobs, and more opportunity. This really is part of President Biden's vision for uh, American manufacturing and American competitiveness, uh, that we have incredible talent, uh, we have incredible resources, and if we just channel our energies to invest in ourselves, really there's nothing that we can't accomplish. And one last thing, uh, China was obviously very against us, you know, pursuing this bill and passing this bill. How does this affect our trade relationship when so many of our other products come from China? Well, look, um, we are in fierce competition with China. Um, and uh, the, the Chinese are uh, and have been steadily investing in themselves for decades. Uh, I think that, you know, um, this is an investment that we need to do for us. 
uh, but it is also the kind of investment that we need to do to stay competitive, um, especially in areas where China is concerned. So um, I'm really uh, delighted that um, uh, we had bipartisan um, partnership uh, and support in the US Congress to work with President Biden and our administration. And I also know that the state of Texas um, and Texas state leadership uh, was uh, supportive of um, this legislation as well. So I just see this as a huge win uh, for um, the American economy and our competitiveness. Is there anything else you want to add about the Chips and Science Act? Anything that I missed in terms of the geopolitical ramifications of this? Because it is a big bill. It's a huge bill. Um, look, what I would say is this, uh, this is a huge accomplishment, uh, but we can't rest on our laurels. When it comes to international economic competition, um, it's fierce out there. Uh, there are a lot of smart people in the world. Uh, we've got a run for our money, uh, but with these types of investments, and what I wanna say is the CHIPS Act is really important, we got to do more of this and we've got to be smart about it. We've got to do it in a way that's true to our principles of democracy and open markets. Um, but, uh, you know, if we can stay focused on investing in ourselves, in the future of the American economy, uh, we are going to be able to compete and, uh, you know, we're going to be as strong as uh, we've ever been. I'm sorry, I actually do have one more. It's um, okay. really just asking, we've seen that this is obviously a big deal, but from experts in the field, industry leaders, they're telling, they're saying that this cannot be a one-off situation, that this needs to be a continued investment. From your perspective, do you think that that will actually be the case, that this is not just a one-time injection of $52 billion into the manufacturing innovation part of this? Look, I think that if we can keep replicating this uh, for other industries, especially ones where we're facing really, really stiff competition from economies that are not structured like ours, that are much more uh, focused and state directed, um, that uh, that is the key uh, to American competitiveness going forward. So, you know, I think that um, we just got to we just got to keep doing what we're doing. And, um, you know, uh, the growth that we're going to see, the creation of jobs, um, the leadership uh, in the international economy, um, there's really the sky's the limit for um, the American economy, um, for American talent. Um, and uh, our future is very bright. Um, let's make a habit of this.